Hey y'all, I'm back with another video and in this video I want to introduce a video series that I've decided to do. So over the last few months I've been playing a lot of different sims and ultimately I've kind of left myself wondering what sim to play, what sims the best to play, and kind of thinking about older sims versus newer sims and are we actually getting better in our racing games of today versus the old ones and so the thought dawned on me why don't we make a table and put some numbers to each one of these sims and we'll see what it comes out to we'll see who wins so that's what this is this is a video series I'm going to do and this is the part one the intro to that and as you can see on your screen there's a table there I like Excel and I like numbers so this works well I'm gonna uh, drive each one of these sims as you can see I've chosen the sims listed here now granted I didn't choose all the sims available um, and I just kinda chose the ones that I feel like are the most prominent um, and I specifically didn't include Rensport because it's just come out in open beta and it's pretty early in development still so I didn't feel like it was fair to put that one on the list but I've listed the sims here from oldest to newest and I'm going to do a drive in each one of the sims most of y'all are familiar with these but we'll do a drive and you guys can can see that I'll talk about it and then we'll put some scores down so you can see I've got 10 categories to score each sim in and the scoring will be 0 to 10 in each category We'll sum the scores up, get a total score for each sim, and we'll see who wins. Uh, and of course, I think as part of this, in the last video, I'll put a copy of this spreadsheet on a Google Drive, and I'll make tabs, and I'll make it editable so you can go in and create your own tab if you want, and score the sims how you want to score them, and we'll just we'll see if that's something you want to do, so it'll be there. Um, so yeah, here's the categories. We got graphics, pretty self-explanatory, right? But we'll be talking about how the game looks, how the game runs, is it optimized, does it work on triple screens, what about VR support, etc. Um, and so that'll that'll entail all of graphics, physics, uh, obviously the car handling, the dynamics of the vehicle, uh, suspension, dampers, all of that. So how does that function? in comparison to what what we at least feel like it should function in, in reality uh, and kind of similar to that but another part of physics is the tires and it's a very important part I wanted to separate it out so tires of course we'll talk about the grip levels and the the grips grip longitudinally laterally uh, under the limit and then at the edge of grip and what happens over the edge or over the limit of grip in the sim Force feedback, obviously very important. It's the main thing. It's the only thing we can feel, you know, when we drive in a, in a game on our computers sitting at our desks or wherever. And so how much depth is there? What forces are being transmitted? How much can you feel the edge of grip? Um, so that'll be all very important in how we can actually control the car, right? As, and the force feedback is how we do that. Uh, moving on to sounds, that's obvious. We want to hear good, full, uh, visceral sounds. If I'm driving a V8, I want to know I'm driving a V8 and feel like I'm driving a V8. But also, what about tire sounds? Can you, can you hear the scrubbing of the tire as you reach the edge of grip? Because, again, not sitting in an actual car, we need these types, types of cues to inform us about what the car is doing. Uh, the content available within the sim. So how much is there? How many cars and tracks and uh, how good is the content as well? So quality and quantity of the content. Uh, the AI and single player uh, side of the game. So I think AI is important in a sim. How does that function? How good is it to race the AI? What single player experience does the game give you? Uh, so that's an important one. And then we've got two for multiplayer. First being the player base, so how it, how good is the player base? How um, how much pl how many players are there in the game? And uh, 
yeah, obviously that's important in a sim, right? We're all looking to compete. If you're playing a racing simulator, you're probably wanting to compete. So a player base is important. Now you might say the quality of the player base is also important. <laughs> well, that, that tends to be maybe different per sim as well. So maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and then also the ranking system. Does the multiplayer have any ranking system? And is it any good? What, what uh, all is entailed in the ranking system? So that'll, that'll capture the multiplayer part of it. And I wanted, uh, just before we get into cost, as you can see, I kind of have two, two different items, physics related with physics and tires, and then two items related to multiplayer, because to me, those are the two most important parts of a sim. So I wanted them to stand out a little bit. And then lastly, cost. Um, uh, this, is, this is maybe the most subjective, but also eh, not, I don't think. I think we can make some sort of uh, comment about cost for sure. And I want to kind of do a baseline average cost being a AAA game in 2024. So $60, $70, that kind of being a baseline cost that you might expect. Now, a lot of these games are old or older, so you would expect them to be cheaper than that. But that's kind of that's kind of where I'll set the baseline. Uh, it, it gets weird with costs now because uh, sim racing has become a very commercialized market, where every developer one needs a lot of funding because the demands are so high. You've got to have great models and, and laser scan tracks and licensed content, and none of that is cheap. But also it introduces the entire you know. The whole thing of buying packs and buying cars and buying certain you know additional content instead of back in the day when you would just buy a sim and get all the content that the sim came with so all right that'll do it then we'll sum up the scores and we'll see what happens now if we end up with a tie in like maybe the top three if we end up with ties below the top three i'm not really gonna worry about it if we end up with ties near the top in the on the podium then I'll probably leave it, toss it over to you guys in the, in the finale video. I'll create a poll and you can go vote. And, and then we'll, we'll take the, the voting results and I'll plug them in as kind of additional uh, score to the tiebreaker uh, t uh, games. And we'll see who comes out on top that way. And I can do a follow-up video if that's, if that's where it goes. So, All right, so this is, this is the intro, part two. We'll do a drive of Richard Burns Rally, and we'll talk about it and score it. Again, this is my opinion. I'm going to try to be objective, but obviously this is a subjective thing. And it's not overly serious, so don't get too offended if, uh, if, if I don't like your sim or if I score something that you disagree with. That's fine. But uh, hopefully it's just fun, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'll see you hopefully in part two, and we'll take a look at uh, RBR.